Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to be spending the next 30 minutes or so um, focusing on the key message. 40 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, the joint vision of Etsy ISGs for <laughs> network transformation. And also we want to continue the messaging that came out of Bonn, um, as Klaus mentioned, about how standards are working with open source, are working with open source um, to enable industry transformation. Joining me here on stage, you've already met them all, Klaus Martini, Diego Lopez, and also Raymond Forbes, um, representing four ISGs, really here. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> three and a half. Before we before we start, can we can we just look at maybe at a higher level um, about Etsy's role in network transformation? What, what what's Etsy's overall objective to support network transformation, and what's its remit? What it what can it do, and what can't it do? Well, Etsy is, um, has a strong position in this um, in this game to support the transformation. I think they are coming from the old classical way of an, of an organization, organization, and uh, for sure it is clear that uh, that there is a transformation need, and Etsy can support in this way that they are delivering standards where this is needed in order to facilitate the transformation process. I think there are, the implementation is definitely not in, in the scope of Etsy, and definitely in the scope of any sanitation organization, but to deliver the right standards on the right level to the industry, I think that is a benefit of an, of an sanitation organization like Etsy. And what they, I think they, they are not, in, not able to deliver detailed standardization in, in a very short time frame because that is normally, uh, let me say, as a benefit of sanitation organization, Etsy, independent from Etsy, deliver standards based on consensus, but it consumes a lot of time. And that's something will be changed, I think, in the future as well, how we, how we can deliver standards which is usable for the industry. Mm. I mean, Diego, you, you, I think we said earlier about it, you, you deliver the standards, but it's up to the industry as to how they use them. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's not only that the industry had, I mean, for sure the industry have to use it. And, and this is something that, well, standard is, a, is an agreement. And if you don't exercise the agreement, well, the is there, but it's, uh, the, uh, I, I think that uh, one of the main advantages of the way in which we are, we are working in it in the, uh, let's say, natural transformation uh, effort is precisely the fact that the environment is quite open. And it's quite open from the beginning because it has been, I mean, the, uh, the uh, entry barriers for participating in these ISGs is very low. For sure, well, if you're a member of Etsy, you have more influence, you have in a better position for the, uh, making things evolve in a certain direction. But if what you have is the, uh, the intention of seeing what's going on and have some, um, bring some results um, and have some early um, uh, impact on, on the evolution of these, uh, of these uh, technologies, it's precisely the idea that it's very open and it's, uh, uh, let's say, it's a, it's a comfortable place for big players and for the, uh, the new uh, uh, kids on the block. I mean, Ray, if I can come to you, your, your ISG, the ENI, is probably the youngest of all the That's ISGs. That's not quite, no. Rip. No, it's not. No, not the youngest? No, we, I, I, I am the youngest one. Well, I am You're the, old, the youngest one. I am one. the oldest on stage, but the youngest ISG. Uh, okay. <laughs> how, how, how are you finding the, op the openness? Are you, are you finding that you, you're, there are sufficient, there's sufficient interest and willingness to, to participate? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't want to wish you to answer the question about youngest. <laughs> Openness, well, the, the ISGs are open, the structure is open, and anyone can join. I mean, Etsy has a, an openness about ISGs, and there's low cost of entry. Uh, to be an industry participant in an ISG just means signing a form. And you may need to pay a small amount of money to come to a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, but I... I wish, I mean, I've constantly said, and I think these two guys would say the same, that there is more contribution. Uh, I think, um, as Klaus said, the purpose of Etsy is to facilitate writing specifications and standards. It's not to tell the industry what to do next. It's to react to the industry. And that's what my ISG was created for. My ISG is the third of these four to be created. Um, and the... I think ENI is open. But ENI clearly welcomes new members all the time, like all the other ISGs do. I mean, they're all evolving in membership. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, that openness isn't the problem. The problem is that ISGs are not particularly slow in the produ production of specifications. Uh, any group of people that get together to write a specification can write the specification very quickly. But to make a specification really trialed in the industry and really feasible, and to move on from feasibility to interop interoperability to openness and across the industry, <coughs> can take several revisions, like 3GBP has got to revision 16 and soon 17, release 16. So yeah, the question is, to be led by the market and to evolve as the technology evolves takes time. But there's no real reason you can't produce a new release of specifications every year or two, as these four ISGs have proven. We, we mentioning this is a, a joint vision from Etsy. This is a joint vision on network transformation. We've got the groups. We've heard from four of the of the groups today. Um, are there are there any elements missing from the overall picture? Are, are there certain gaps that that still need to be need to be plugged? As, are any of the other Etsy groups um, important in the overall picture here? Well, clearly the four ISGs don't represent the radio industry. The four ISGs don't represent the fabric industry. Uh, they are represented in different parts of Etsy. Uh, the four ISGs, there, there are parts of the industry the four ISGs don't represent. Uh, ICT, which is part of Etsy's scope, isn't particularly represented by the, uh, we could be represent the over-the-top uh, application and data industry, but uh, we, Etsy lacks uh, contribution from those. It's beginning to get memberships. The AWS and uh, Facebook and Google and Microsoft are members of Etsy, but we would encourage them to make more contribution, of course. I'd like to address uh, it was, uh, it's, uh, something to what uh, Ray mentioned before. I think Etsy has a strong position that can cover a lot, uh, but uh, I think you also believe is we, uh, they are not 100% in, they can not, not deliver 100% what is needed to, uh, to, uh, to fix the problem around automation. I think that is really, a, it should be a joint activity between a couple of uh, SDOs or open source projects. And I think nobody is able, uh, not Etsy, not DMF, not MEF, to uh, mention the prominent one, to deliver uh, the complete solution for this automation topic. Um, and uh, ZSM, as I said, has an, is interested in to drive the topic forward joint, uh, jointly with the rest of the industry. And, uh, to come in also from a talking in a doing mode is also important. That to give you a, a clear answer to your question, no, Etsy is not able to deliver, to cover 100% of the, yeah. I agree with Klaus, yeah. 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 Do you, one, of the, one of the key takeaways from the Bonn event um, at Doshi Telecom co-hosted um, was communication and, and the need for, for communication. How are you ensuring communication within Etsy, first of all. Let's talk about outside of Etsy in a moment, but within and between the ISGs, how are you assuming there's no duplication of work, you all know what you're doing, and you have full visibility? Well, we are, we are friendly people, we are in very good terms. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, no, no, but th this is very important. I mean, the, uh, w one of the advantages of being in the same environment is that uh, there is a lot of uh, cross participation. There are the, almost the same people, are very, well, the, the number of participants in more than one ISG is, is very high. This is, and this is the base of the communication because there are people, I don't know, I, just to give you an example, there are people that are extremely active in MEC and extremely active in ZSM, extremely active in NFV and extremely active in, in MEC or in CSM or in ENI. So the, the idea is precisely that these people are bringing issues informally. That, and this informal, informal communication, we are talking about technical matters and we are talking about the, the, the real, the, the gory details of everything is very important. Formally, formally there are several groups and I, well, for example, we, we, we all participate in something that is called OCG that uh, these two ladies there can tell you what, what means because I don't remember it right now, sorry. 
But it's a, a, an operations coordination. It's an operation coordination group. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> so the idea is that periodically we have meetings, we discuss about how things are going, not only among us, I mean, not only among these four groups. That includes a wide variety that in some cases is something that is very illuminating because you find that other groups are doing things that could be of interest. Recently, inside the NI, I was making a proposal about reusing some resources of another group that has nothing to do with us. I mean, it's dealing with IoT, but they have some interesting results. So we have these two formal and informal levels of communication. And precisely one of the goals of this white paper was to show that this is happening. It's not that there are the ENI guys on the on the on their on their own moving in one direction, and the I don't know the MEC guys on their own moving in the, in a completely different direction, or even fighting the uh, the the other the other groups. It's not the case by 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 far, and we are trying to get into deeper and um, stronger coordination because we have this we, we have discovered that is uh, necessary. Hmm. And what about communication and coordination with groups and associations outside of Etsy? Well, I, I think it can always be improved. Communication can always be improved, but communication is getting better. I mean, many of us have been around the industry quite a while, and uh, we know people like ONAP, uh, and we know the BBF leaders, and we know the... So, uh, I don't think... There's a, a historical problem. Uh, many of the organizations sprung up because the, there was a problem at a particular time. Like TMF may have taken some management activities from Etsy about 20 years ago, uh, and they did a very good job at creating a library of, uh, of DevOps-type functionalities. Uh, but I don't think at the moment there is a particular problem of interworking. Like, how I want to bring together groups uh, into a, d a different kind of overseeing organization. So there is a, we're, we're working on that with these two guys. And I, I represent the manufacturing industry. These two guys represent operators. But yeah, it's, it's a bit different in that sense. D Diego mentioned uh, your, your last answer about having commonality of people working between in different groups. Um, Klaus, we've come across this in the open source community as well, with some of the open source projects. It seems, from their perspective, it's very beneficial to have them also working, or at least colleagues from the same organization working in the standards arena. That is what, what Igor mentioned is completely right, that these people are working jointly in an SDO environment for in Etsy or in CGP as a five, because they're an expert about management, but you can find the same people in an ONAP community. Um, there is a transformation uh, of thoughts between the organization given by the fact that the people are involved. That is good for us as a community. That is worse for the people who are, do have to do the job because they are traveling a lot. That's, from an industry point of view, is that useful? What is one something missing is more or less a clear picture guided by the management. That they are saying, okay, well, I see this, what you're going to, what you like to achieve. Uh, then it gives the people a clear guidance what should be done next and how they work together. I think that is needed for the time. Be, uh, this, this should be done now to give more guidance from the management point of view. I'm not talking about network management, I'm talking about people management, company management. What, what they're expecting from the different organizations separately and jointly. I think that is what I think should be done. Uh, more, give more guidance to the people who are doing the job. Now, ISGs have a finite life cycle, don't they? You, 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 you apply to renew or extend your work if, if necessary. Two years, every two years. Every yeah. two years. Yeah. So, so who, who makes that decision? And, and can that lead to a change in direction or shift in... Um... Well, formally, formally it's taken by the Etsy uh, Director General. And I am in the impression that uh, the Etsy board that represents the Etsy members are, have, a, have a voice on that. And well, I, I doubt very much that the Etsy board doesn't consider a particular ISG interesting any longer that would be approved. So at the end, it's, the, it's, it's up to the members, the Etsy members. And this is why I was saying before that in despite of ISGs being open for, to anyone, being an Etsy member is interesting as well, because then you have a certain decision power there. <clears throat> so. 
Uh, normally, what you have is that you, you, you have to write down a document justifying the, what is the work to, to, uh, to, go, uh, uh, to continue. And well, even, even if the community thinks about uh, things that uh, um, a change of direction is necessary, that, that's open as well. I mean, whether you have to be uh, still be called HCNV if you're going to work in, I don't know, uh, radio interfaces, that's, that's another, another question, but uh, it's, uh, it's completely possible. But this is a strength of Etsy, surely, and, and this just helps in supporting this, this joint vision for network transformation, that you do have this, this regular checks and balances. I yes, guess, and checks and balances, yeah. I mean, it's the, the decisions are made by the Etsy Director General, uh, assisted or advised by the Etsy Board. Uh, now the, if an ISG has completed its course and done its work, which some have historically, not the ones we're working on, but... Uh, uh, then the ISG doesn't apply for an extension necessarily. Uh, the ISG has to apply for an extension to... So uh, most extensions are granted in some form. And clearly if an ISG changes its scope or applies to change its scope to a, uh, no, jump on top of another group, like if uh, one group decided to pick up radio, there are plenty of groups in Etsy doing point-to-point -point radio and 3GPP is doing point uh, <coughs> multi-point radio. Uh, uh, which is, 3GPP has a strong influence in Etsy, uh, then the board would presumably say something very strongly uh, and the Etsy director general would understand <laughs> and would go back to the group and say, please clarify, probably. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to pick up on um, the OSM being not an ISG, an OSG? An OSG, An OSG. Yes. How, how, how does this sit with the ISG structure? How, does this point to a, 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 oh. maybe a shift in the future or is just, just an alternative approach? No, it's a, I mean, my understanding is that an alternative approach. I mean, mm. OSM, must, uh, the nature of OSM, OSM is, a, is an open source project with, with all the consequences. The deliverables of the group are the different releases of the... Uh, and the conditions for participating are similar, but you are, I mean, uh, they are a little bit more stringent in terms of the uh, IPR because you are disclosing code and not, uh, not yeah, the uh, The agreement uh, is very different in words, so, yeah. so it's different. Yeah. But the nature is different, so it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's something that is there. It's, it's another possibility that is open if you want to participate. Mm -hmm. Does it? Each company has to sign an agreement and the agreement for an ISG is to contribute and to be part of a, a specification contribution, a report specification. Mm. Uh, the agreement for an open source group, an OSG, is, is to provide code and to respect each other's IPR. And, yeah. Klaus, can I come back to something you mentioned in your presentation? It fits in with this joint vision that Etsy has, and that's gap analysis. We keep hearing more and more about gap analysis, seeing what work may be being done by another body or ISG and letting, letting that work continue there. That seems fundamentally important to, to how you continue your, your, your workflows. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. As I said a couple of times, we are, we are a deep believer in, in, uh, in cooperation, collaboration, because our, our view is uh, that we, we can't do everything by our own. That is really a question which can, only can be solved by the industry and that we need different bodies. We need uh, MEF, TMF, and ONF. Uh, I think we have to find what are the right body, right bodies to work with, uh, to be open and clear. Uh, I think some some bodies maybe not that important than other to solve the top problem. And to pick the right one, I think that is now important to do. And to uh, set up a good collaboration with them is also important. To do. And, uh, yeah. I think that is something what should be done next to do in order to enhance the collaboration process, not only between the STOs, as I said, also, also between the open source communities. Sometimes I have the impression for the time being, if I reflect what I saw this morning, that we have some, some STOs that have a huge area of overlapping concerning their, their specification. And I think that is something uh, that we have to figure out because uh, it costs a lot of money to send people to these different STOs. And there's always in the company, in DT, uh, a discussion, why you are go by the hell you're going to this STO? What is benefit for us? <laughs> and that is a discussion which should be also reflect in the discussion, the discussion between the different STOs. And that is something what I'm a little bit missing and that's 
was one of the, the reasons why I mentioned this morning how we do it. Let us do it. That is, is the point. Is this, is this situation getting worse? Is each SDO expanding its own remit and so you're getting more and more overlap as we grow? Well, <laughs> looking backwards, I am long enough in that, in, that, uh, in that industry, if you would count all the SDOs which you had as you set up GSM, Spitzifer GSM, I think maybe we had five, maybe five. Now we have 50, hundreds, and we are really good in order to set up good new, new organization group or groups which take care about some problems, but to bring it to an end, that is really hard. Yeah. But it's, I compared a little bit with the service introduction in, uh, in my company, I think there is a new company, no difference. The management people, or the, uh, the marketing people are promising a new service, we built a new service, we rolled it out, then f by the end of the day, <coughs> the benefit is not there as expected, but is there a point in time we make a decision, let, it, let, let the market, let the service die? Very hard to do so. And that is something what I see also in this civilization world or open source world as well. And there is a discussion definitely needed how we're moving forward, maybe how we can merge some STOs, how we can streamline this one, because the effort is huge. We've talked about the need for collaboration for a long time, and, and Klaus, you yourself have just said on, on stage that this has been going on for a, a long time. We talk now needs to turn to action. That was one of the points of the Bonn event, was to progress here. Um, it, it sounds simple, and yet it still somehow confounds us most of the time. What, what positive action is Etsy taking? How, how are we turning, how are you turning talk into action? Well, I got a really good, well, we got a really good feedback from Etsy and also from Linux Foundation. For sure, we had some offline discussion before Bonn event, beyond the Bonn event. And the spirit is there. The spirit is there in order to, as they are saying, okay, let us move uh, forward jointly. Let us put the right the structure in place, how we can discuss it, how we can collaborate. And I have really good feeling beyond the bond meeting and about the feedback and about the agreement, how we can moving forward. So I think that is, is a good point in time to do that. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, at the end is, um, uh, you know, human organizations tend to to last forever because we are humans and you have your, your position and you feel like, well, your people, the people are that uh, are around you that you know best uh, are much better than the others. And, and that, that's something that is, is challenging. I think, I think that this is something that has to happen at, at, as well internally in the different participating organizations. It's not only about uh, organization X uh, talking with organization Y, it's about the, your people inside your company that are attending organization X talking with the guys who are going to organization Y that are not necessarily the same. And that, that's important as well. It's something, it's something that cannot only happen at the, at the uh, upper organizational levels, or, but uh, as well internally in the different participating uh, companies. One of the things that we are, we are certainly not hearing is the need for yet another structure or layer to coordinate all this. It's like, whoa, well, no, thank you. Happy. Well, <laughs> let's try, let's try. I mean, it's going to be fun, isn't it? Well, I, I think well, with, within an organization like Etsy, you can begin to envisage ways of making groups coordinate or encouraging groups to coordinate. But, I mean, the, trying to have a global organization that manages is uh, a layer of anarchy on top of a layer of anarchy because each of the SDOs is contributed to and influenced by its members at the end of the day. Now, I know each SDO has its own <coughs> management structure, and its own management structure wants to live forever, but if the members want two SDOs to merge or to collaborate or change direction, they can make it happen. That's, there's many organizations in Etsy, both technical committees and ISGs which have uh, ended and migrated in other directions. Uh, so that has happened. It's a question of the members deciding where they want to go. Uh, yeah, so it's not, it's really an issue for members is to get together and decide what they want to do. Yeah. I think it's not a good to, uh, to add something. It's not, it's not a, good, a good idea to, to set up a new master SDO organization. It's definitely not a good idea. Because uh, I compare that with my kids. I'm the father. I give guidance. 
but there's no, no, nobody else. And the kids follow that. I think as if the if the problem to implement the same rule in SDO organization, because there is no father, there is no mother, they are SDOs, they are unequals, and that is something that we have to respect. And that is very important to understand. There is only a, a way to solve that, to have a collaborated and joint approach on equals and not on competition. Great. Should we um, ask our audience if we've got any questions for our guests? Any, 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 uh, any questions at this stage from anyone in the audience? There's a gentleman down at the front here, and there's a microphone just, just behind you there. Yeah, so HC no doubt is doing wonderful job for the entire telco industry. Uh, but how does the feedback mechanism works? So, for example, uh, the operators are struggling, uh, you know, for the stuff like VNF onboarding or VNF lifecycle management uh, and all that. So, does because after uh, even so much of a struggle, uh, we don't find any answer, you know, from HC in terms of. Uh, giving some kind of recommendations uh, to everybody or something like that. Uh, wherein, wherein if, if by contrast, if we uh, take, for example, GSMA, so they have come openly, you know, in terms of helping out the industry, uh, you know, by giving the use cases, by giving the uh, testing framework for uh, uh, complete NBI and uh, NFBI and VNF infrastructure and all that. But at sea is somehow found uh, lacking in that. So, is there any specific reason for it? I don't know which one to do. I mean, yeah, I guess that Diego wants to follow up on this, but yeah. Uh, to get an, something discussed in Etsy, you basically have to create a work item, which means companies have to collaborate. Companies have to get together, a number of operators, uh, users, service providers, manufacturers, and, and they write a scope. And then once you've got that agreed, it gets put on the agenda and you have to contribute to it and make, make an agreement. How you go beyond that, I guess. There, there, are, there are a couple of uh, points here that are important. When, when you mention this testing stuff and all the like, do you know what the, the test suites that are going to be used where they were developed? Do you know? The, the, those test suites were developed inside the TST group in yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's the first thing. So, so the work, I mean, I mean, is done up to the level that it should be done. We, we have personally, I believe, I mean, just a historical note. I joined Telefonica seven years ago. When I joined Telefonica, I was convinced that the telecommunication networks were more, much more regionally organized than they are. When I found that the, well, things were as, as, as it were, one of the surprise for me was precisely that 3GPP architecture was killing any kind of innovation any operator would do. Telcos have grown, telcos and vendors have grown to have always the all kind of solution and only compete because you are providing a fancier um, terminal or a better, or a better subscription to Netflix. That's, not standardization. That's monoculture. And monoculture is bad by definition everywhere. So, I mean, the kind of solutions that is makes sense to standardize, the kind of solution that makes sense to be fully controlled is cannot go to the very detail that an external body is going to tell me as an independent company, which, uh, well, not me, is telling my vendors that Unless everything is certified, they, they are entitled to ask me for multiplying the price by 10. This is something that is dangerous, and I think it's dangerous for the industry, and we should start forgetting about that, because the current mechanisms, the current additional flexibility we had with, uh, with um, um, virtualization, standardization, softwareization, whatever we call it, and uh, uh, with the, uh, the idea of, uh, of, uh, of open source, is precisely the idea that you can try to differentiate and decide on your own what, what you want to do, there, even, even within a certain framework. And this, uh, this afternoon when I was presenting OSM, OSM allows you for different, very different deployment styles. And this is important. So it's not a failure of the standards that they are not allowing monoculture. That should be precisely the goal of standardization. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from our Audience, anyone's got a question for the panel? Any more questions, any more questions, any questions? Uh, I, I have a question. Um, we, we talked, and I think, actually I think it was you, Diego, who, who brought this up, about the support for industry-wide transformation. 
We're just talking about network transformation. We're talking about CSPs. We're talking about operators, but also regulators. Even do, do, we, do we ever? Is is it within our remit to try and I don't want to say influence, but somehow encourage those regulators and the policymakers to <laughs> be part of this picture with us? It's not yes. a fair question if you talk to an yes. operator. Like <laughs> no. Nice clear right. answer from the end. Yes, we like that. I'm, I'm not, well, regulation does affect manufacturing as well, but <laughs> to a different extent, a different way. But the answer to the question is yes. But <laughs> the question is how. Uh, mm. is, well, that can go on forever. I can debate that. Well, well I, I, I guess that in general, and this is something that uh, takes time, I mean, it, it took time originally, and well, the, the internet services were regulated very, uh, I mean, much later than, than the internet was created. And this is something, current, current regulation is based on boxes and, um, mm. and interfaces on boxes. This will have to change, mm. hopefully for the best, or for the better, mm. at least. To, ch to um, let me say in this way, it takes a while that operators have to learn that we are changing from hardware to software. <coughs> Regulators, they need more time for the learning process. And it will take a lot of time and effort to bring them up to speed. I will not complaining. I, it's only a fact that we operate closer to the industry and they, are, they have difficulties to change their behavior and so their strategy. And regulators much, much far away from the current industry deployments than operators. And if the operators need time to change, I think <laughs> regulators need a little bit more time to do that. that, that was Great. Regulators are members of ETSI, and regulators can come to ISGs and other bodies in ETSI. So uh, regulators are not excluded at the front of the process, but regulators do take time to understand how standards affect regulation. Excellent, that's good to know. Uh, for now though, I think, I think we should call it a, a close. Uh, Klaus, Diego and Ray, thank you all very much thank indeed. You. Thank you. It's a pleasure.